Hi everyone, David Maley here. We're back for part two of creating some cool plots or scatter plots in R. So uh, we left off last time with this graph right here using the basic default plot functions in R. And in this uh, video, we're going to go now into ggplot. So let me bring up the code here. And we're going to start right here. So instead of doing it this way, what we're going to do is we already have our data in there. Um, if you don't, go back and watch part one. It shows you we'll have it in test day three. This is the bike share data set from the University of California, Irving. Um, pretty cool data set. Here it is again. You know, you have your sales, your uh, temperature, two years of data, 2011, 2012. Um, and we also converted the temp to an R temp. The reason being is temp was 0.61, for instance, for 61 degrees, and uh, we want it to be right there, 61.75. So we just made a new field for that and added that on there. But we did that in the previous video, so if you haven't watched that, please go back and watch that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the basic uh, start of ggplot. So let's first do this. Let me get this to highlight here correctly. We're going to start with the basic default scatter plot in ggplot. So if you look at this, you have our data frame right here is the first part, test data three, comma the aesthetics, which is going to be in this case just an x and y variable. So you've got x is count, which is your rentals, and y is r temp, which is your temperature. I could have also used temp, but I want it to be like here. 20, 40, 60, 80 degrees, not 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then I have to explain to somebody later on, hey, what does that mean? It's multiplied by 100. Let's just do that and make it look correct. That's why I created the R temp uh, column. So if we do this, run that, this is our beginning, our basic, basic default ggplot scatter plot. So you have our data frame, our temp here, and our column, our temp there, and count here. And there's not a whole lot you can really get from that. I mean, it kind of looks like it goes up in this direction, but let's get some more of that. So now, see how these are filled dots? The last one we were at in the previous had uh, whole dots or, or circles. So if we want to go back to that, I can add one little piece to that. At the very end, I can put a plus with the GM point like we had, but inside it, put shape equals one. And if I do that, now you have almost the same things we had before with the little circles. Okay, now it doesn't matter if I do that or not, but I just want to show you how to do that. Now, if we want to add a regression line to this, remember we did that in the previous one, right? So to add the regression line, we just leave the, the top piece here, all this, but we put a plus, and then we're going to add this here, a geom smooth. Inside, we're going to put method equals LM, right, comma, color equals blue you don't have to have a space here we could actually take that back there but we want it to so it sets it apart so this is going to be a blue uh, linear trend line okay so if we do this if we don't do the se equals false then it gives you the uh, in confidence interval with it we'll show you that in a second but first let's do it with false so you just see that line okay so if we do that there we go there's our line so it looks very similar to what we saw before a little bit nicer looking but still, we have our line, and not a whole lot you can tell from it other than that. If you if this amount goes up, this amount probably goes up, or if the temperature goes up, the sales go up to a point. But what happens up here? Does it you know does a straight line really represent that? So next, I want to have a confidence interval to this. I want to see how confident can I be that you know 95% confidence interval that you know these these points are going to be on this line. So what we're doing here if you look at this is I took away the SE equals false so by default it's going to give me the confidence lines if I just use that line right there okay so it's the ggplot function remember the data frame aesthetics or x and y variables plus gm point shape one if we want this uh, these circle dots if we want them just to be points we get rid of that shape one in the middle there and just have gm point and uh, then we have the method here equals lm color blue for gm smooth so let's do that and there we go. Now it looks a little bit better. And you can see the confidence interval is very small here, but then it grows here and it grows there. Now we can also do a curved trend line with a confidence interval. 
okay, without the LM method, which I just talked about. Okay, so if you look at this one, the one we just did, now look at the next one. We have, it looks very similar, except we got rid of what? Shape equals one is gone now. We're just using color equals blue. So now we're going to make these dots be blue circles. Okay. And if you look here, we're going to make our, instead of our line being blue, it's now going to be red. So let's take a look at that. Now look at the difference. See now the difference here is this actually shows you re a representation of the data that's truer than a straight line. So if you look at this, you know, down here as it gets more sporadic, you can see that's why the tail opens up here to be, you know, the confidence interval grows really large here. It's very small here, so that a lot of the points are closer to this. And then it grows a little bit here, and then it really grows towards the end. So that is a much more representative uh, confidence interval and curved trend line. Now, next, what we want to do is I want to make this a little bit better. I don't want to just have blue dots because how do I know what those blue dots are? Were they 2011? Were they 2012 data? What month were they? What, what, uh, you know, what, what season was it? So what I want to do is let's first go here and I'm going to differentiate by season. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So now what I've done is I have the same beginning part, but I have GM point, and whereas before we had GM point color equals blue. Now I have color equals the season column, okay? And I know the season column is one through four. So is it season winter, spring, summer, fall? So we do that, and then we're going to have the smooth color equals red instead of blue, right? Or, yeah, no, it's still red, okay. So let's take this, and I'm going to take that, and I'm going to run that. And watch what happens here. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit cooler. It's a little bit messy. We're going to fix it in a little bit. But what we to take a look at here is we have done this by season, right? So, obviously, our lowest one here is probably going to be winter, right? And then we have spring and fall. And then we obviously have summer up here with the highest temperatures, right? So, you can clearly see the sales, the temperature here, and the sales here. So, they go up as the temperature goes up. But it really goes up right here. And, you know, you can now start to see where the different seasons lie and where our sales ranges are and things like that. Now, what if we wanted to differentiate instead of by season? Something that would mean probably more in this case and be a little bit less messy would be year, right? So to differentiate by year, this is the problem. So in season, it's one, two, three, or four. That's the way the data was. That's the way the data shows if you look at it. But for year, they have zero or one. Is it the first year or the second year? Zero or one. And the problem with that is, is that if you want to work it through this and differentiate by color, a zero is not a positive number. It will only pick up for positive numbers, so it won't work. So what I need to do is I need to change it from a zero to a one and from a one to a two. So that way, instead of zero comma one, it becomes one comma two. So what I'm doing right here in this line of code right here is I'm taking the year column, right? And I'm making a new column called pause year, positive year, and I'm just adding one. So if I if the if the answer is zero for 2011, now it becomes one for 2011. If the answer is one for 2012, now it becomes two. It's that simple. So we've added this pause year to it. So when you run this, let's go back to test data three, and let's look at pause year. So if I look first at year, years right here. See how it's zeros. And if I were to go down, it'd be ones. I could do that here. Let's go way down. It'll show in a second. There it is, ones. You can't have zeros in there. So if you go here to pause year, let's go up here. We now have twos. You saw that. And at the top, we will have ones. So we have ones and twos. So if you go back here, now they're both positive. So now I can go and create a plot based on those. Now let's open this up a little bit so you can make sure you see all the code here. Okay. So I've got, now that I've done that, I want to do this line right here. So what this is, is we're going to take where we were doing ggplot before, same thing, ggplot, data frames, test data three, aesthetics of x and y, right, count in our temp, color is test data three, pause year, right, so now we're going to color it by the new column that we just made of ones and twos, plus gm point with nothing in there, plus gm smooth, with this color equals blue. 
So now let's run that. And then the thing is, look at this. What it's going to do, it's going to put that in this thing called final plot. And there's a reason for that. So if I was to run this as is, I would actually take this right here if I want to see it in this plot. So I do that, and there it is. Now I can bring it out a little bit, make it a little bit nicer looking. Now there's a couple error or not errors, but things that I want to change with this. So when you look at this, now you can see what you can see. 2011 is black, and 2012 is the blue, right? So you know, even though it's got a color, you could have more factors in here, and it would put them that way. That you know that the blue is two, is the second, which is 2012, and you know that the black, the dark color, would be 2011, and you have your same curve and uh, the uh, confidence interval and all that but what I want to do is see these labels they're kind of ugly I don't need to show them the data frames or I have to explain to my users what a data frame is so I want to get rid of those and put something nicer in there and then I want to get rid of this one too so let's go back here let's bring this back so you can see all the code and what I want to do is the next line here so see this what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the same thing but next what I'm gonna do is I have well, first we got to put this. See this? We ran it this way. It has to go into this uh, vector called final plot. So actually, let's do that real quick. That's the only thing that I've done right here. So let's do that. Now that it's in there, so it's in final plot. It's up there. Okay. Next, what I want to do is I want to run final plot. So see, it's final plot. So it's basically running this ggplot code right here. Plus, see this right here? This. And what this does, it adds to that. So it's going to take what we've got right here on the right, but it's going to add the labels. Labs means labels. And so it's got X equals rentals. So instead of count or test data three dollar sign count, it's going to have rentals. And instead of test data three R temp, it's going to have temperature. And for the title, it's going to have daily bike rentals by temperature. Color is going to be by year. So this will say year. And then we will have a caption down below on top of that that says Tech Know How David Maley 2018. So you could say whatever you wanted in there. So let's run, let's run that now. Because we already ran it into final plot. And there you go. Now look at that. That looks much nicer, doesn't it? So we bring that out. Let it pop. There it goes. We have daily bike rentals by temperature. We have temperature over here. We have rentals over here. I don't have to explain to users what a data frame is that aren't programmers, that aren't coders, and don't know what it would be and wouldn't ever use one. Um, we have a year over here. We know that the black is 2011. We know that the blue is 2012. And we have the little uh, caption down below, Tech Know How David Malley 2018. So that's how that works. And it's got the temperature correctly. So if it's you know, 25 degrees, 30 degrees, 50 degrees, 75 degrees, whatever it is, all the way up to 80 degrees, it'll show it here. You know, and not 0 0.25, 0 0.50, or anything like that. So let's bring that back, and I'll show you the code again. And that is the end of it. So that's what I wanted to show you was how to do this. The end part, it's not that tricky to do this. All you're basically doing is we're creating this ggplot piece right here, and we're throwing it into this vector right here right so it goes that's what the arrow does puts in this final plot and then all I'm doing down below is calling that vector which does runs this plus the labels that's all and that's what we just ran was this so this is a more advanced graph obviously than the ones that come standard with the plot function that you saw earlier in the previous video but this way you have multiple different ways of doing your scatter plots you can do it with just plot x y you know your XY columns uh, if you want you can you can change you've now seen how to change the labels how to change the title or add a title to it um, how to add uh, trend lines and uh, to see you know what um, is trending what the confidence interval is how to get a straight line for a trend line and how to get a curved trend line you've seen all that and then we ended up with a nice you know more realistic graph like this that actually shows you where the data flows which way so it's not even just a curve it's got multiple curves to it which are more uh, you know along with the way the data is structured and then on top of that here you can see you know one year on another or we could put you know one season over another or four seasons together whatever we want to do here but that's how you do that so I hope you found this helpful and informational 
Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and comment, and have a great day.